I drove around Japan for two weeks straight, going into every second hand shop we could find, looking at some of the rarest retro games and consoles ever made. Over the next couple of months, I'll be taking you guys along the journey with me as we explore this beautiful country and see what insane stuff we can buy. These videos were made entirely possible by Sendico. They're a service which allows you to buy all of the things you love from Japan and ship it all in one box to your door anywhere in the world. But more on them later. This is episode four. So this is actually my last day in the Sendico building and we're heading off further up into Japan but I ordered a Pokemon Game Boy Color whilst I was actually here in Japan. So we're gonna go into the warehouse and try and find it. Other than this one scratch where it's just been on the table, that is like, that is pristine. Okay, time for some retro hunting. Hard off, hard off, hard off. Yes, I know the name sounds dodgy, but these shops make me hard. Wow, look at this. Immediately, a GameCube Animal Crossing with the Game Boy Advance e-reader included. Remember, a thousand yen is roughly seven dollars or five pounds fifty. They had this stunning limited edition Metroid New 3DS XL. A Game Boy Advance SP for 60 bucks and a clear pink Game Boy Advance for 40 dollars. At the back of this cabinet was some promotional Sonic VHS tapes. They were ridiculously cheap at four dollars each. Here's some lovely cheap Game & Watches. And just look at this, nearly every retro console you could want and controllers for less than $35 a set. Unreal. I didn't even know there was box variations for the Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. And then we reached some tubs of junk. Every controller imaginable for a few dollars each. Even this dog bone controller for the AV Famicom. Speaking of AV Famicoms, here's one right here. And here's a PC Engine CD-ROM system. This case connects everything together. Look at these little tiny Japanese portable TVs and an epic dual cassette player. And for the vintage camera lovers, look at this. And for the vintage camera lovers who love tat, look at this. What else can I find in this place? Anyone for a stack of faulty Super Famicoms? Or what about a bunch of Wii's? And here's some more cool Japanese vintage tech. I found this little blue tub hidden away, and inside it there were a couple of Nintendo DS consoles. Do any of them work? They only want a few dollars for these. Would you look at that? There's no denying that Japanese game art is superior. Just look at these boxes. I still haven't been able to find a Tetris minuet copy in the wild, but you better know I'll keep looking. Honestly, words cannot describe how happy this place makes me. Just to find really cool stuff in the wild is just amazing, and there is so much to choose from. Let's hit the road and carry on with our journey across Japan, finding rare retro tech. Next up, we're gonna visit this small local independent store that I've definitely not mentioned yet at all even once. Wait a minute. This white switch light was awesome, but it is just a custom. Here's a real white Nintendo 3DS XL. An upside down Game Boy Micro for $120. Rather expensive, to be honest. I love that these stores have consoles and games hooked up. I also love seeing all of the N64 color variations. Take a look at all of these games in the cabinet. 
it really would not be hard in Japan to get into retro gaming. You can literally walk into one of these stores and for less than $50, buy yourself a working console and controller and a bunch of different games. Here's a fantastic train controller for the Super Famicom. And here's a beautiful boxed Master System and Panasonic 3DO, both for just $80. One thing I saw lots of in Japan was PlayStation Vitas. I don't really know anything about these, but it's so nice to see all the different variations. Here's a PlayStation 1 for under $3. It is in such good condition. Crazy. I love finding little gems on shelves like this Panasonic CD player. And here is the very first mini disc Walkman by Sony. Here's a bunch more mini disc players. I even found this old Mario toy. And look at this mystery Pokemon box. I used to play Yu-Gi-Oh as a kid and it was crazy seeing this many rare cards. You could even buy a mystery stack of cards for under $10. Look at this absolutely stunning gold Nintendo 64 and controller for just 60 bucks. As I said earlier about box art, just take a look at this Star Fox N64 game. $11. Now let's head to the next hard off. This was by far the best hard off I'd visited so far on this trip, for one very specific reason, which you will discover in a minute. There's a couple of bargains. And there, look. These are some bargains. This isn't even the start of it. Wait till you see what I found just round the corner. A dream come true. This shop had so many Game Boys and Game & Watches. I found this stunning red Nintendo DS for just over $20. There's some box Nintendo DSi consoles for 15 bucks. And you better know I grabbed these Game Boys. But then I found this. Everything I had watched growing up on YouTube by people like Luke Morse. A box of super cheap Game Boys. This is exactly what I had traveled to Japan for. This was me living my dream. I'm so glad I filmed this because I had so much adrenaline rushing through me I hardly remember it, so I cannot wait to watch this back in the future. I nearly just picked up the box and walked over to the till and bought everything. What an absolute treat. I'll be giving some of these away, so stay tuned for this series to find out when I'm doing that. Look at this amazing Pokemon camera. All right, let's switch to the GoPro. I found this absolutely epic USB mouse, which I'll be using every day. I love it so much, and it was literally less than a dollar. Look at this big DS game box, and here's Skyward Sword with a Wii remote, and let's have one final look at some of the amazing stuff in this shop. And then we're heading off on an adventure to find one of the biggest statues in the world.
Okay, so let's head off on a Zelda-style quest to find one of the biggest statues in the world. This statue is hidden behind an abandoned onsen hotel. Well, not exactly hidden. It lives in a Buddhist temple, and it's one of the largest canon statues in Japan. This thing is 73 meters tall, and it's hollow, so you actually used to be able to go up inside it. I'm not sure you can anymore. This statue is only just smaller than the Statue of Liberty. Look at the size of me compared to it. That is going to be it for this video. A massive, massive thank you to Sendako for making this entire series possible. If you want to buy epic items from Japan but might not be able to get out there anytime soon, visit Sendako and use their fantastic service to buy items from Japan and they will put them all in one box and send it to you for a very reasonable and competitive price. This is how I've gotten my hands on some of the rarest items I own. I cannot wait to show you what I got in the next episode, so subscribe and stay tuned. I'll see you soon.